Hello and welcome to the last section of this course. In this section, we will study the best practices in handling errors in JavaScript. First, we will study some of the best practices that you should follow while handling errors. We will then take a different route and study errors in the context of promises. We will use the strategy pattern to create an error handler similar to the one we made in the section about design patterns and principles. And finally, we will do some logging because error handling is not just about notifying the user, but also about logging and debugging certain errors. Let's begin our journey to the error handling world by exploring some best practices before we dive into the making of an error handler. Handling errors is hard, and in JavaScript it's even harder. So in this video we will lay the foundations that will hopefully lead you to a better understanding of what the JavaScript engine has to offer in regards to dealing with errors. So in this video you will learn how the JavaScript error handling syntax really works and how to use it to your advantage, the do's and don'ts of error handling, and finally you will learn something very important, how to deal with errors globally without polluting your code with several try catch blocks. Just in case you never had to work with error handling in JavaScript, let's have a quick explanation of how the basic JavaScript error handling syntax works. I'm going to create a new variable, I'm going to call this my func, but I'm actually going to assign an empty object to it. And then later I will call it as if it was a function. Now obviously if I run this code, I get an error that my func is not a function. And that's true. But we don't want that ugly error. We want to present something to the user. So I'm going to use a try catch block. If an error gets thrown inside the try block, it will be caught in the block below, in the catch block. And information about the error will be contained within the error object, the first parameter to the catch block. But instead of printing that to the console, I will print a user friendly error. If I run it again, you can see that we get the oops something went wrong error. Now there's one more thing to that. There's the finally block. You will rarely have to use this one, but you have to know, and this is confusing developers, that the finally block runs every time. It doesn't only run in case of errors. So you can see that it runs if we have an error, but if I actually provide an implementation for the my func variable, if I actually make that a function, and print something to the console, like this is my function. If I run the code again, you can see that even if it runs and no error is thrown, we don't enter the cats block, the finally block gets executed nonetheless. Let's bring this back to normal. Now back to some tips for cleaner and better code, in this case for better error handling. As a general rule of thumb, you should avoid giving out many error details to the user. Malicious users could use those details to their advantage. So what you saw before with the uncode error and the stack uh, printed to the console window is kind of bad because it could be exploited. Based on the previous tip, you shouldn't also keep console.log statements in your code when shipping to production. This is a very common mistake that developers make. It's not enough to disclose vital information to the user when they can find the same information in their developer tools window. The next piece of advice is don't fill your code with try catch statements or it will look ugly and nowhere near clean. You should instead opt for the window.onError event. This is what we will be studying in the rest of this video. There's actually a way to avoid having to maintain multiple try catch blocks while also being able to handle errors globally. And that's the window.onError event that we will be studying. I have created this example. I've also included this express script. Now, if you're not familiar with Node.js or express, you should ignore this. It just allows us to serve the index.html along with all other files using a fake server. Now let's get straight to the point. The window.onError object obviously is only available on the browser. 
allows us to have a global error handler that catches all uncaught errors and does something. Now this error handler consists of the following arguments. We have the message that we will print first. Let's first include a friendly message like error details. And then we have the message, which is the default message that your error generates. We have the source, the name of the file that caused the error to happen. We have the line number. This is extremely useful when debugging. We have the column number, not so useful, but you should include it if you want to be super verbose. And the error object that contains more details. Some browsers include a stack trace in the error object, but that's not standardized. So you should not be using it uh, for logging purposes. You could use it for debugging though. Now I will create a function object and call it as a function, run the project using npm start. The server is listening on port 3000. This is what the express middleware does. And you can see that we have the message that the func object is not a function. We have the source, which is the app.js file. It's on line 11, column one, and we have an object. Now notice that this red line here, this uh, part of the console window is not something that we printed via the global error handler. This is coming from the browser. So depending on which browser you use, this may be different.